Let's talk a little bit about the structure of the transaction, though. Uh, it's an MOU, and half of it's roughly half of it's in auctions. I, what are the chances of this actually kind of getting derailed? How firm is this? Well, I'd say it's, it's quite firm. Uh, this is a 15-page MOU. Virtually every parameter uh, is uh, already done. We're just going into the, uh, the contractual stage, which is mostly contractual language. Uh, uh, this should be done by no later than February 15th. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Emirates and Airbus, uh, neither uh, would sign an MOU unless everything was, was finalized. OK, so it, it sounds like it's a done deal. Let's talk about kind of what changed. What changed between now and the Dubai Air Show? Uh, you said a few days back that the Tim Clark and the team had come back with a series of questions from Emirates. Kind of what needed to get done to get it done? Well, Guy, uh, you and I are both uh, aviation buffs, but you know I can't tell you uh, what went on in the contract negotiations. But uh, it was obvious that we weren't quite there at the Dubai Air Show. Uh, uh, we thought we might have been uh, close to getting a deal announced at that point. But, you know, these are airplanes that are going to be delivered over the next 10 years. Uh, whether it gets announced at the Dubai Air Show or, you know, two months later it isn't that big a deal. And we just needed more time. John, this, this kind of isn't your bailiwick, but it is your success as bailiwick, I guess, in a way. Um, is this a lock in terms of Rolls engines going onto these 380s, or do you think EA's actually got a chance of getting back in? Oh, absolutely has a chance of getting back in. Uh, uh, the fact is that in the contract, it's clear that they have an engine choice. There are uh, two different engines available, the Engine Alliance out of America with GE and Pratt & Whitney, and, of course, the Rolls-Royce uh, engine. So uh, they will take several months to decide uh, which engine they want to select for the next batch of aircraft. Um, you've talked about the fact that we can expect more wide-body orders coming through. You talked about three coming uh, in the next few months. I, what can we expect at Singapore? Where are those deals going to come from? And, and you talked yesterday as well about kind of more interest. You expect more deals for the 380. Who's waiting in the wings? Uh, well, once again, uh, uh, airlines prefer to make their own announcements, but we are negotiating a deal, and I have said that uh, I am highly confident that we'll have at least one more A380 deal this year. And in terms of wide-body deals, 330 uh, NEOs, 350s, uh, we expect uh, several to be announced uh, over the next few months. John, um where aircraft get made is becoming an increasing part of, I suspect, what you've been doing. Um, and I'm curious to know, I, for instance, if China were to come out and order 380s, would I expect that more 380s or bits of 380s would be built in China? Is that kind of the way the narrative works now? Uh, pretty much. Uh, you know, this is an, an international industry. Uh, uh, whether you're Airbus, whether you're Boeing, uh, the airplanes are being built with parts around the world. When you have four million parts on an airplane, uh, they're coming from all over the world. And uh, I think we all should be proud of that. This is truly an international uh, enterprise. So uh, if uh, there was going to be a significant order out of China for, for 380s, uh, we'd certainly be willing to talk about uh, some industrial cooperation in building some of those components. So, so can we expect? Can we expect? You, you've already kind of gone. You've gone narrow body in China. Can we expect wide body in China now? Uh, well, again, that's uh, up to the Chinese, and uh, that's probably for uh, the guy on the next watch here. But uh, the fact is that uh, we think the airplane would be ideal for China. Uh, you know, 1.4, 1.5 billion people, uh, uh, congested airports, not just there, but the places they want to fly to, key cities around the world. Uh, this would be an ideal aircraft uh, for, for Chinese, uh, China and Chinese airlines. So, yes, we could be looking at uh, doing some industrial cooperation with the Chinese needs for a significant order. Can I just stay with the China theme? Do you have any exposure? Do you have any financial risks surrounding the HNA group? The financial difficulties surrounding the group at the moment uh, is becoming increasingly well known. Is that something that, that could expose Airbus as well? Oh, expose, expose your business? Well, uh, again, uh, not, too, not too much. We build airplanes, so you'd have an industrial risk if they were to get into uh, some serious financial difficulty. We have airplanes coming down the assembly line for airlines in the Hainan Group, but uh, we also have pre-delivery payments, significant hundreds of millions of dollars of pre-delivery payments uh, to cover our industrial exposure. So um, uh, we wouldn't be uh, you know, that directly impacted. We aren't financing aircraft uh, for the Hainan Group.
but we, we are building our plans for them. John, what do you think a 130 euro dollar would mean to your successor? Well, remember we're hedged an awful lot. If you go to our website, you can see uh, uh, the hedging uh, per year going forward. Uh, so uh, at, at this particular point, it isn't the impact that a lot of people think because of the extensive hedging that we've uh, entered into.